Yeah, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. It's the Sportsmax Zone and we continue with regional domestic football, this time from Sweet TNT. Two rounds of matches have been completed in the newly rebranded Trinidad and Tobago Premier League. These are the latest results. Police and Defence Force, the Champions Defence Force 2-2. Eagles losing 2-1 to Prison Service. La Orqueta 3-1 over Morvan Caledonia United. 1976 Phoenix losing to FC AC Port of Spain by four goals to one and Sando 1-0 over Central FC. So after two rounds, AC Port of Spain, Prison Service and La Orqueta Rangers are the pace setters. There we go with the table all on six points, then Defence Force in fourth position on four points. Sando, they have three and Police rounding out the top six on two. You can see there five teams yet to get off the mark with uh, 1976 Phoenix FC at the foot of the table. Former Trinidad and Tobago international and zone correspondent Brent Sancho has been following the action and he joins us now to give the lowdown on the competition. Um, how are you doing, Brent? I'm great as usual. Hello to you and hello to Mariah and all your viewers. Yeah, I'm interested, first of all, in the reception to the start of the TT Premier League season because from where I sit, Trinidad and Tobago's football starting to look on the up again with the performances in the Nations League and will have an opportunity still, as difficult as it will be against um, Canada next year, to qualify for the Copa America. And so it's a wonderful opportunity for the local-based players to... Um, I mean, excel and impress the coach. Um, and it is also an opportunity for the fans um, to come out and be part of the action. What has the start been like? It's, it's been lukewarm. Um, it lukewarm in the sense that uh, we've had, uh, you know, some, some of the venues have had a decent amount of spectators. Arima Velodrome, there was a game on Sunday between the armed forces, police play, defense force, had a pretty decent turnout. Uh, in terms of the play on the pitch, it's it's not been bad. Uh, of course, uh, there is some one or two new teams in the league. Well, actually, one new team in the league, one renamed team. Uh, Tobago Phoenix is a new team that's come in from the sister isle uh, for the first time. And then we have uh, Canupia FC changing the name to Eagles FC. Uh, I, I say lukewarm, Ricardo, because uh, from a corporate perspective, I was hoping to see a little bit more corporate support. And that's something that's uh, you know a little bit disappointing, especially as you rightfully mentioned, that the national senior team has been picking up some decent results. We had a very good attendance at the Hazy Crawford Stadium for the Trinidad Tobago victory against the United States of America, which is now set up this game in March. Uh, so when you put all that together, you get a look, look warm from me. Mm, all right. Um, Brent is a, a, a hard grader, you know. He, <laughs> he generally is. Let's talk about what's been happening on the field now. Um, and what you make of the action so far? Well, it has been as much as the same as last season with the likes of Defence Force and AC Port of Spain showing already uh, their, their title credentials. Police FC has signed a significant amount of players, inclusive of I, I, um, Alvin Jones, uh, inclusive of Karen Ballpest Cummins, inclusive uh, of uh, Kaleem Highland, who's yet to play yet. Uh, so they seem to be the team that is well stacked. That it's uh, the, the favourites coming into it. Uh, of course, there's a surprise package so far in Prisons FC. Uh, they've been doing very well. A team that finished second to last last season. Of course, now in uh, I believe in third position, undefeated so far and with two victories. Uh, and of course, there's the absence of two uh, teams that are normally and traditionally household names in the league in Trinidad, in W Connection and San Juan Jabluti. But all in all, in terms of the action on the pitch, it has not been bad. I think a lot of it is, is showing that the teams that are now starting, of course, that's the teams minus Defence Force, minus Club Sando, and minus AC Port of Spain, all who partook in the Caribbean Club Championship are just getting up to speed. They, they probably had an abbreviated preseason and they didn't really get, they have not really gotten a stride. But those three teams that I mentioned seem like teams that are already into stride. So it's early doors still. Interesting results, interesting football so far, but the front runners are the front runners and they've already started to set the pace.
Yes, Brent, and I was looking at the result from La Hoqueta versus Mova Caledonia. La Hoqueta starting the season with a bang. Talk to me about this team and some of the strengths and, you know, what are we expecting from a team that has already started very hot? Yeah, and that's a team that uh, certainly will be in the reckoning. Of course, they slipped off last season significantly, albeit, of course, uh, they ended up in the finals uh, of the cup competition. They've gone very young, Mariah. They, they, they have a, a couple of 16-year-olds, a, a quartet of 18-year-olds, and they all seem very competent to perform. Uh, Josiah Edwards out on the left-hand side has looked a bit of a handful. Uh, Daniel David, a player that has uh, come through the ranks and is now playing. Tariq Lake, a youngster that played with St. Benedict's College, is now with, of course, the Minnesota Hockey to Rangers. They're doing exceedingly well. And they've also had a bit of a revamp at the back as well. So they look a solid team, not necessarily unbeatable, but very solid. I think for them, it's about consistency because the fall off last year was surprising to many here in Trinidad and Tobago because there were expectations that they would challenge the likes of Defence Force and AC Port of Spain. But with the youth that they have so far, they look like a team that could certainly cause their trouble on the day. Right, and I know, Brent, in your response to Ricardo, you named a couple of star players to look out for. Uh, talk to me a bit about this one, Isaiah Lee. What has he been looking like? You know, what are we to expect? I'm very impressed, Mariah, from what I've seen with, with Isaiah Lee. A, a tricky customer plays out on the left-hand side, very comfortable in 1v1 situations, uh, drives at defenders, uh, has a finished product as well. He scored a couple of goals. Uh, and Ricardo mentioned the fact that, of course, Trinidad Tobago plays Canada next season, uh, next March, for that all-important spot in the Copa America you just have a feel, Mariah, that uh, there are one or two players who have a point to prove through the national coach, who obviously was at the last fixture between Terminal Excel Hockey to Rangers and uh, Caledonia FC. Uh, and he would have been impressed with Lee, albeit he came off at halftime, he ruled his ankle. But he performed so well in the first half that he was a judge man of the match for the entire game. He's a player I have to look out to. Alexander from Central FC is looking like the type of player that could obviously knock on the door uh, for a national team call-up. There's a Nathan Lewis who's, who hasn't been called up for the last five years or so, have looked the man rejuvenated. So it's, it has shown some players looking for that national team play, looking to get involved uh, in the possibility and the reckoning to play against Canada, which has, of course, made this league very interesting. And, of course, as I mentioned, some of the old-timers, the Alvin Jones, the Jovin Jones, Kaleem Highland, all with Police FC, which makes it a nice callaloo, as we say in Trinidad. Yeah, Brent, I want to get... Um, your assessment of the reaction in Trinidad and Tobago um, of a few top players um, deciding to come to the Jamaica Premier League as opposed to play their football there in Trinidad and Tobago. Nathaniel James played 24 minutes at the weekend for Mount Pleasant, Overy as well. Of course, we've seen an influx of um, Caribbean players coming into the JPL, but I want to get the response specifically out of Trinidad and Tobago, though, especially because um, you are trying to revive the TT Premier League, and in its second season, it hopefully will gather even more momentum. Yeah, look, I'm not surprised, Ricardo, because at the end of the day, maybe five to seven years ago, it was the other way around. Players came to Trinidad to apply their trade, yes. uh, of course, with the clubs here. But the, the, the league has really taken a hit over the last three, four years, financially, that is. The clubs have uh, suffered significantly coming down into the pandemic. And, of course, the pandemic would have uh, accelerated that rot that was happening within the club. So, financially, they weren't able to, to of course, accommodate players coming from overseas. So, we, we've seen an exodus of players. Even at the high school level, we've seen players go across to Jamaica as well. Uh, so, I'm not surprised from that manner. What, what I'm happy with this season so far... There are a couple of teams that, that has players coming in. For example, Eagle FC have three players from Haiti. Uh, Caledonia FC has a, a couple of players from St. Lucia and Guyana. So we're so, slowly seeing that integration of players coming back to Trinidad. But as it is now, it is not the finished product. It's still the league that is trying to find its footing, that's trying to find, uh, of course, its stability, and it's trying to find its old form of being one of the top teams, if not the top team in the Caribbean, because for many years, teams from Trinidad and Tobago dominated the Caribbean Football uh, Club Championship. We haven't seen that for quite a while. Uh, in fact, all three teams from Trinidad have been knocked out in the group stage. 
So it's still getting there. It's still rebuilding. Uh, there's still some time for it to build. I think this year, Ricardo, for this league is exceedingly important because it will now start building the platform, which hopefully would be uh, a brighter and bigger league in the future. Yeah, Brent Sancho, thank you very much. Um, and you speak about the Caribbean Club Championship, of course, Jamaica's Cavalier in that final. And there were two Jamaican teams because Harborview got to the semifinals as well in the last four. So um, the Jamaica Premier League at this stage can say that they are what the TT Premier League was um, some years ago. But hopefully the TT Premier League can get back to that level and uh, we can see um, the clubs doing extremely well at the CFU and beyond that, the CONCACAF level as well. Thanks very much for joining us, Brent, and we'll chat again. Thanks, guys. Have a great one. Yeah, before the break, a reminder that the TT Premier League continues on Friday with round three. These are the matchups for the third round of action. Sender versus Eagles, Prison Service versus the Champions, Defence Force, Police versus Phoenix. Uh, Central will be away to point 14 and uh, Port of Spain against La Orqueta. There you have it. That's coming up in the next round of matches in the TT Premier League. Let's take a break. We'll be back with more.